So I'm gonna break down my method of doing virtual sets using Blender and After Effects. Recently worked on a project for Vo Williams to promote his song, Big Numbers. We were going to create two short 10, 15 second spots and he wanted them to be in cool virtual sets. And we landed on him being a giant in a stadium at night and one on top of a mountain made of football helmets. <laughs> Before we even shot it, I actually started prepping all the stuff in Blender. The football stadium being one where I just sort of found a football stadium uh, online and I downloaded it. I used uh, one of my go-to procedural crowds to fill up the stadium with a bunch of little dudes. <laughs> it's this plugin right here, procedural crowds. Luckily the stadium, they already had like vertexes like set up on the seats. So I guess they knew that somebody was gonna add a crowd to it. I added some emissive, just some random emissive lights to like textures to a couple of these dudes and that was basically to add some like light texture in the background so each instance is going to have a different color so I threw an object info node and I took the random value into the factor of a color ramp with uh, three colors to have like multiple different colors in the stadium and that lines into the emission so to set up this helmet mound, it was actually kind of a fun technique of doing it. I went in and I used like an object that kind of looked like a mountain, kind of like this, and I instanced the helmet as particles. So if you create a particle system on the shape that you want, and you change the source of it to volume, and you change the distribution to grid, then what you can do is let's uh, go to viewport display and not show that emitter and we'll set the start frame to one and the end frame to one. Then I basically upped the resolution as much as I wanted to and then made the object my helmet. And so I instanced the helmet. Here it's the sphere. Changed the scale randomness a little bit to make it kind of random. And then I added some random resolution and some random rotation to everything. And then I had to go in and fine tune it a little bit. I also did the same sort of shading technique. So not all of the helmets are just one shade of color. Each one of these helmets has like a different color and a different shade to them. And I also did the object info node with a random factor making different color ramps with uh, different colors. And another thing I did was set this to constant because if I set this to ease, everything will like smooth into each other. Um, we'll just make, if you make it constant, then it will just, you know, jump to one color. And then I switch that into the base color. So each one of these helmets gets a little different color, which was a fun way to add variations. And the key to this whole setup is that I basically cheated and used a really good HDRI in the background that looks like mountains and it looks like he's high up in the sky and I really didn't have to do much to the whole thing. We did two setups. We did one outside with a blue screen and one inside on a green screen. I put them up on an Apple box and then I used my gimbal to make some cool swooping shots. And the reason why there's like a circular edge around some of the shots is because I had to find the widest angle lens that I had. My camera is full frame and my lens was super 35. So that's why there's, you can see the edge, but it doesn't matter when you're shooting on a green screen as long as it's not cutting off him. So, you know, you can cheat a little bit there. Now I didn't have the most evenly lit green screen and blue screen, but the best thing about living in this day and age is that rotoscoping and roto brushing is your best friend. <laughs> First, I track the shot. Usually I use Blender to track the shot, but sometimes if I'm lazy, I'll use After Effects and use a add-on called Tracker Jack for Blender and After Effects where you can send your 3D camera data to Blender. And it's actually sometimes faster just to do it in Blender anyway. So for tracking for Blender, what I like to do is I go in and I add contrast to the shot and then I add unsharp masked and I duplicate that stuff. Then I export that as a MP4 or in JPEG image sequence, because that will be a smaller file size for Blender to track. Basically you need eight good tracks throughout your shot, trying to get a solve error of less than one. Once it's actually tracked, I put a plane object where he is in the scene. Then I'll take that object and then I'll add a UV project modifier. You can project your footage onto that plane 
making him essentially stable. So because he is normalized in the scene, we can add another camera that's close to the original camera and we can make our own camera moves. Just as long as you keep it close enough to your original camera, you can actually do a lot with this technique. So I usually key in After Effects because I'm just super comfortable with it and there's a lot of fun tools to make a shot look better. What I usually do is just use the Roto Brush tool and I just Roto Brush it and the only thing you need to do is key out the blue in between and then you just key that like normal. One thing to keep in mind is color management because we're going from After Effects and then we're sending the image to Blender what I do is make sure that all the colors are playing nice with each other make sure that you're working in a linear color space in the uh, project settings tab I will switch to a working color space so if you change your working color space to re log and then you make sure you hit linear color space. Now you're gonna have a linear color workflow. This is essentially meaning this is what After Effects is going to spit out at the end, an Ari log look. Then what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have your footage and then you switch to interpret footage, main, color, and then you switch this to the camera profile that you have. This is not how it's going to render out. It's going to render out as an REC log because that is your working color space. The comp is all linearized, which is just a fancy way of saying all of the data is going to work nicely with a, another software because it's kind of a set linear look. Your working color space is your camera's profile or similar. I changed mine to REC log three. So that log footage you have, you convert it to linear and you view it in after after Effects as an sRGB and you output the working color space, which is the S log three or the REC log three. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So if I have this keyed, I'll render this out. And then I usually use a TIFF sequence with alpha. You can make it trillions of colors plus, which will have a higher bit depth, which is kind of important. If you go to the color tab, it will say working color space REC log three. That's how it's going to want to render out, which is going to be a flatter log profile. If you want to make sure that this is linear, set preserve RGB. Then you render it out. So we import in our TIFF sequence here. What I do is I just make sure the color space is set to linear. As I send the alpha into a mixed shader node and that is with a transparent and an emissive shader and that sets into a, the surface. Now that the shot is actually in there and stabilized, I can have another camera be animated in a different way, but it's stabilized into the scene, so it works perfectly. This is the secret, secret sauce at the end of it. So what I like to do is have two view layers, one of your background and then one of your green screen. So at the end, you're going to render two frames, one of your CG render and one of your green screen. This is after everything's said and done with the, with the rendering. So I'll have the green screen with the new camera animation. Then I'll have the background CG like this. Make sure you set your green screen layer to indirect only. So when it's rendering, it will catch the reflections and the shadows that it would leave, but it's not gonna be there in the render like this. The final thing you need to do is to render a multi-layer EXR, and then I use a half float with a WAA compression. That's just smaller files. Basically, an EXR is a linear file format, so it's going to render it out in the linear color profile and not the color profile that you see down here. It's going to to render out as linear. Because everything is already linearized, the green screen with the new camera animation is going to have the same exact colors that if you just did it in After Effects. Then when you import in your footage, you can use the effect extractor because it's going to be black when you import it in, and you can go and find green screen combined, which was the, the view layer that I created called green screen, and that is right there the green screen layer by itself and then we'll duplicate this background and then change the top layer to the mountain and now you have him behind the mountain just like that and the cool thing is because this is a separate layer uh, you can go in and mess with the colors of the green screen then once it's all comped and it looks good and I color grade it using DaVinci then I have a final product and I think they turned out pretty good yeah. 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 Yeah.
So that's basically my methodology when doing something like this where you're doing a completely full virtual set. If you want to learn how I made a Coors Light commercial with the same sort of methodology, go click there. And if you want to watch how I did some cool music video effects, uh, go watch there. I'll see you all in the next one.